14th of July, OKR, inclusivity round right here at Edinburgh Stadium. And uh, when I reflect back about inclusivity and think about the lives that it's changed, one of the most gratifying parts of it for me is definitely the women's game. And I'm joined by Lewis Forsell here, who is the head coach of the Leeds Rhinos women's team. And I remember going as far back as 2019 to Papua New Guinea with the England women's side there and seeing players like Caitlin Beavers start their international journey. And wow, she's come on since then. Lois, just tell us a little bit about how you've seen the game develop and how it's changed young women's lives on the course of that journey. It's changed absolutely. You know, it's, it's become massive, I guess. It's become bigger than what I think any of us could have thought back then. I think you think about how my journey started with the foundation. I worked over at Hunslet as part of the foundation's development plan. Um, and women's rugby, had a, they had a development officer for, for Leeds. But other than that, that, that was it. So they had one person in post and that were a development officer for Leeds. Um, who I was lucky enough to become on and, and get that role. Um, but then you look at it now and you go, well, you've got, you know, women's rugby, you've got women's pathway, you've got a lot of international representing the club, um, you've got a women's head coach. It's an integral part of the club and everything that they do. And I think, you know, who thought that we'd be playing, you know, three or four years down the line, we'd be playing every home game at Headley Stadium. Um, it, you know, we'd, we'd get one a season maybe when we first started. It, it became under the foundation's banner. The foundation did an incredible job of getting the team up and running and recognise the importance. and. You know, at the time I was working for the foundation, but playing for Bradford Bulls. So you, you think the sort of like three or four years that it, it's, it's, it's just excelled beyond what we could have probably imagined. And we're happy where we're at now. We're not content because we never will be, but we're happy where we're at now and proud of how much the game's come on in Leeds, at Leeds um, and outside of that. And, and just looking forward to what, what we can do in the future to make it even better. And the semi-final at the end of the month, Potential to go on and play at Wembley. What would that mean to the girls? I think that you know that's a real big incentive for a lot of the girls because it's something that's never been done before. It's something totally new to the competition. And when you think about elite and playing somewhere that sort of in, in cap, in, you know is that it is Wembley. So I think that the girls are obviously got it in the back of their mind, but we're very much keeping them on the ground. If it's a week at a time, we've got you know a couple of league games before we get to the semi, then you've got to do a job in the semi and you know perform well in, in that and then you get your opportunity and we'll still have to, you know, keep his eyes on the on week by week. But if we manage to get there that'll be something special for I think everyone involved, whether it's a player, a member of staff or a fan. Um the club would be really proud of the girls if they manage to get to that to that final. And just thinking about opportunities, we always pride ourselves in the fact that we try to create opportunities for all ages and abilities, backgrounds, beliefs. And I think about the women's game now, the way it's developed, a lot of young women going over to Australia in the NRLW, thinking of Van Gogh, Fort George Roach and others. Just tell us a bit about some of the opportunities that are for the elite girls and some of those pathways and where they can lead to. I think that's why we're so proud of some of them names that you mentioned, getting that opportunity. We've obviously got Fran Goldthorpe going to uh, the Cowboys and we've got George Roach going to Newcastle in the NRLW. Um, but they're both Leeds girls. Like Fran, we worked with in the foundation. I remember she came with Benton Park to a competition that the foundation run. Um, and then they came on through our academy into our women's team and, and George Roach is a, a drig lass and come and played for a hometown club. Um, and he's massively proud of that. And we know that when she comes back, she'll be, she'll be itching to get back to Henley. But um, it's massive, like they're going out to, to forge a career. Um, it's going to be one of their, you know, paid job whilst they're over there, living a different life in Australia. Like that is what sports about, the foundations about, and what I think we're both so passionate about is it really does change your life and gives you opportunities and makes you just be a better person, be a better version of yourself, and and give you a place of belonging because you know rugby is is integral to them, it's their identity. And we're proud of them getting that opportunity and hopefully, you know, we can make sure that the girls in this country get that opportunity, you know, to maybe achieve and excel to them levels in Women's Super League in England as well. Or if they want to have that opportunity to go live on the other side of the world there as well. But yeah, it's, it's massive and um, it's just really exciting for the game. I love how you talk about passion. I think we're both really passionate and that drives our motivation when we get out of bed each morning. <laughs> One day, Lois, I'm telling you, with the work that you've put into the game, certainly the women's game, there'll be a statue of you one day. You've <laughs> been exceptional. But I wanted to ask, why are you so passionate? Why are you driven to see some of these young women in particular fulfil their potential? It's a tough one, but I think if you're asking me now, I'd probably say um, I recognise how much the sport has given me. And I think 
when I started playing rugby at seven, I probably didn't see it then, but like being able to stand back and look retrospectively, um, it gave me a place of belonging. Like it, it gives you something of being able to be good at something and maybe someone else isn't. So when I played, I was one of the only girls who did it. And I thought that was pretty special. Like I was good at something um, and that allowed me to harness that and feel confident in other elements of my life. So that were, you know, one particular academic, but wanted to go to university because I wanted to do this job. I wanted to be a sports development officer. And I thought that'd get me to that point. And I knew that I could play rugby alongside doing that. Um, rugby made me feel just at home, I guess, grounded, give me give me something that I was good at. And I think that that's what's so good about rugby because, you know, there's 13 players on the field and we, we speak a lot about people being different and there's 13 people on the field who are totally different, um, but all are, are good at rugby and can feel at home and welcome for what they bring to the team. And I think that's massive. And I think that that motivation and passion's only got bigger from my time at the foundation. Like, I'm incredibly grateful for everything that that job gave me and still does. You know, obviously I had to retire from rugby early. That meant that things changed, but I still had a place because of everything rugby wore and how, how you can still be good at different things. But the big ones are like seeing players. I know you spoke about Caitlin Beavers and, and, and she is a special one in terms of she used to come on camps with us and there's some funny photos of her way back when and the progression that she's gone on. But, you know, like Shannon Lacey, going on to that, that tour in Papua New Guinea as well, who met at, at her school at Leeds West Academy, went on to play at Stanley, then came and trialled and played at Leeds, was a development officer for the foundation and now is doing a teacher qualifications at Leeds City College. Um, you know, Lucy Murray, Corpus Christi, won a grand final last year. You could go on and say so many different names, but a lot of those girls have been involved with the foundation and without the work of that, you kind of don't set them off on that that trail that you say about the smoke behind the, the sorry, the flight path behind the um, aeroplane, like we don't see it at the time, but that is massively what the foundation have done. Um, giving those girls a place, giving them a, something that they're good at and giving them a, you know, somewhere to excel. And I'm pretty sure that they would all probably sit here and say the same as me, like their lives have been enhanced so much by sport and what it's given them. Um, and that's, that's just a great thing that we can all say and something that the foundation has enabled. How good is that? I couldn't answer it better myself. The vapour trail of influence. You also spoke there about... You said it a bit better than 13, me. Well, I've done it a million times. <laughs> I keep regurgitating it in my mind. 13 different people within a team, this mosaic, not just inclusivity, but diversity as well. That's what we love about the great game and fulfilling our potential within opportunity. Diversity around 14th of July, OKR. Lois Forsell, thank you very much. No worries.